Hi everyone, welcome back to Grandpa Mark's Hobbies and build up Nate number one of a car that I've been wanting to build here for quite a while. This is the 1957 Revell Cadillac Eldorado Brome. And boy, oh boy, <laughs> there is a lot to this little car for hardly having any parts. So let me get the guys out of the way here. Lee, you're just in the way anyhow. Chandler. TJ, Zach, you can work on them later. Tim and Lori and Duke, you can finish that photo shoot in a bit. Uh, we're just going to move Wayne out of the way because he's holding the seat down. So let's start. have to move Mr. and Mrs. Alderado out of the way. Let's start with this body. <laughs> when I told everybody that I was going to be building this, I had a lot of comments saying, watch out because it's a bear to put this thing together with the interior and everything else going on all at one time. And I can sure understand that because just trying to put it together to work on the mold lines and everything, I was having a bear of a time. Um, right now, I don't want to try to crush it all together like I've been doing because I... Um, the uh, Tamius white putty is still a little bit wet. There were some huge uh, mold lines in here and you can see the structure in the back here going through. Every one of those had a uh, like a wave in it that needed to be addressed on both sides. Um, this one in a trunk, I'm afraid to even try to do anything with that because I know as soon as I do I'm gonna screw up all the details in here so I filled the fish eye in both sides filled these on both sides and I think once they dry I'll sand them and then I know I'm gonna have to putty them one more time and then I'll sand them again and get them nice and smooth and we'll go from there but I did clean this edge line up as best as I could and I fit it together a couple of times with some um, rubber bands and um, uh, clothespins, like twisting them and tying them in to make tourniquets to pull tight. And I'm pretty sure that's how I'm going to have to glue this thing together um, once we go to do that part. Because there's no way in God's green one that you're just going to be able to set this down. You're going to have to fumble with it a little bit. Um, I'm going to have to use some of my slower drying glue when I do this. But the one nice thing is, is these trim panels. Now this will all be painted silver. And then we'll do Molotov, or not Molotov, but uh, bare metal foil on this going across the back because this is chromed out. Dogs are having fun today. Um, but what this does is this will fit up in here like this. And that's going to hide the mold line in the back. And then where the body goes together in the front, that seam is going to get bare metal foil. So we'll go bare metal foil all the way down around, and it's supposed to go over the top of these lights and across that way. So we'll have to do that too. This whole front end will be bare metal foil all the way around and then all the way back here too so this is one time that just uh trying to use a multile pen isn't going to work out because i'm going to need that bare metal foil almost like a gap filler too if i have any and i just noticed this right here so as soon as i'm done i'm going to fill that i bet you i got one on the other side too I do. I didn't even notice those two fish eyes until I picked it up here. So I'll fill those because that's what we had all the way back here too. Really deep on this one. But there is the body <laughs> for what it is right now. And stick around till the end here because I'll show you the paint color that I chose and give you the mix for it too. And it's really simple, but dang it, on this it's going to look really good. The seats are nicely detailed seats, um, front and back. 
I'm not sure this is going to be chrome right here. And I, I'll probably bare metal foil this too, just because it's so big that I want that to be, um, I want it to be perfect. And I think if I just multile pen that with something that big, it's just not going to work out. So we'll just, we'll bare metal foil this once I get it all sanded down. I just glued this together. Um, one thing that I wasn't sure about is the Tamiya Extra Thin Cement works great with this old styrene. Um, this thing on the directions here, where did I put them? When I opened this up and I was looking at the directions, the very bottom of this is copyrighted 1957 by Ravel. Not sure if this is an actual 57 car or not, but um, you know me and I like to clean up mold lines and all that stuff big time. But on the bottom of this, right here, it says Ravel Inc. 1957. So I want to leave that on there. And as a matter of fact, I might even take and, and highlight that a little bit when I do my dry brush. This is a curbside, so there's not going to be a lot of detail. Um, well, there's not going to be an engine, so we're going to go with that. And there's not a whole lot of suspension detail, but what we have, we can make look pretty darn good. It's just a matter of paint down to the flat and then come back and paint back over, um, to the part because you never are able to paint. And I mean, you may be, but I'm not good enough to paint like this exhaust and not have it run out on the bottom here a little bit or a brush slush and where you kind of go, ah, darn it. So you, you just got to expect to come back at it this way too once you're done and fill that in. This section right here, what I'm going to end up doing is when I, when I paint the body, I'm going to mask this whole underside off because this is already a really decent semi-gloss black and there's no sense in redoing the wheel. It's already there. So I can just take some of my green painter's tape and run it right down this frame line on both sides, tape that off, hit the body, you know, all the way around, let that dry a little bit, peel it off, and, and I'm good to go. And then all I'll have to do is paint in all the little pieces um, flat and I'll use my um, acrylic flat that I've been using all the time and then we'll hit that with a little bit of dry brushing before we start putting well before we put the two little pieces of suspension on here um, and then we'll dry brush those before we even attach them but that's the bottom you know we'll do an aluminum here I'll do aluminum on the uh, exhaust and then we'll take the uh, uh, Tammy is weathering and we'll come back over this and we'll darken it up rust it a little bit. I mean, this isn't a show car um, Mr. and Mrs. Eldorado are driving this thing So they're gonna drive this to the show and it's gonna have some weather and back in 57 they really didn't do um, Stainless steel exhaust so it's gonna show rust and that rust pretty quick so That's my plan for the bottom the top and I keep wanting to put this together backwards at the top and it does honestly lay in there pretty darn close it's just that you gotta fidget with it a little bit and I'm sure once I get this sanded down and I can get my paws on here I'll be able to bend these back and forth to where when it does drop on it it'll drop on pretty nice but right now it's it's a tough fit I have to actually work it down and I get one side like this on, and it is, it is a pretty decent lay, but then you come around to the other side and you're still way out of whack and you gotta pull and bend and twist and all that. So we're gonna work on that. It, it will go together nicely with very little seam line. It's just, I wanna make it to where when I do have that interior in there, when I go to put this thing on there, it self lines itself. And if I have to, I will add tabs in here all the way around where I can and where they clear the body line or the the interior 
to where it kind of has to line itself up and it'll it'll move these in and out just a little bit just like when you do a ship a ship body uh, most of the time I add little pieces of styrene trim on the inside to make it to where they line up this way um, one piece of styrene going this way just like what they have here these little tabs are made to pass onto the inside of this and kind of pull it together but I think I would like to add maybe four or five more of those going down especially in this trunk area where it seems like I struggle you know I'm, I'll add one or two here and one or two here and maybe something here I just can't go very long on them because there isn't a whole lot of room but we'll get it and it'll go on there to where you know it's not going to be a you drop it and it goes and fits on there like a lot of them but what do you want from 1957 you know that's this is this is a just a dang different way to put a kit together and i'm i'm still jazzed with that no matter what the struggles are going to be with it it's still going to be cool as heck to be able to do that and look just talking i'm fit pretty close you know, when I put the rubber band tourniquet on there, it will pull it down because there is a little warp in there, but nothing big. So anyhow, I've talked about that more than enough. We have Mr. and Mrs. Eldorado glued up. I will be painting them with a uh, coat of flat aluminum first, and then we'll come back because I'm not going to have him in a black suit or a black tux. I think I want to have him in something a little, a little more flashy, but we'll see. I don't know. You never know. I might brush paint his cummerbund and his shirt and his face and everything with the silver and then go in because the silver will help mask this without going burnt gray primer or anything like that. The silver will really cover up the black with her. It's not going to be a, uh, a big deal you know she's got a black dress on i'm gonna leave that a black dress i will paint it but i'm not gonna have it that glossy of a black um and then her hair will do and everything else but from the dress up i will paint all that silver and then the dress itself will just leave the black but she does show a lot of skin in the back here her hair and all that um and this stuff here, when I'm done, I want it to all, where it all comes together, I want that to show. The Ravel did a lot of work on these molds. They're really nice. I mean, he's even got a beautiful bow tie. So we'll, we'll do that, and uh, it won't be hard at all. I showed you the seats. Let's go with the bumper here. Right now, I don't want to fumble with it too much because I just within the last half hour put the uh the black panel liner on there and i'm seeing in the light that that's really showing chrome a lot i was planning on putting another coat on here tomorrow night but for right now it's looking it looks better in person let's say than than on the uh on the screen this uh camera really likes to pick up the silver for some reason i did the orange tail lights or uh, turn signals on the bottom i know they're supposed to be kind of white but i really wanted to uh, accentuate that those are the turn signals on the bottom these top ones i'm not sure really what they are other than just decorative and then these big bullets on the front i'm gonna have to mask off and paint because they're like a rubber black on the ends here. So we'll have to take care of that. The headlights, I tried something tonight and it just, it, it really didn't work out. As I took my gloss Mod Podge and put a layer um, in the light lenses and it looked really good until it was all the way dry and it's crystal clear. So what I might do is I might come back and put a light coat of my matte Mod Podge on those light lenses to try to make them look a little more like light lenses and not just a big hunk of chrome. I've done it before where I've panel lined them, uh, done different washes and things like that. 
but they are my my nemesis when it comes to the chrome light lenses i'm never happy with them so we'll see what the the uh mat does it's been a long time since i've messed with them so not sure but now i'm really happy with these these rims or the uh, hubcaps here that's panel liner i just went around all the little fins in it with panel liner and then the uh center i hit with the clear red there we go with a clear red but it still shows the chrome cadillac emblem in there and i know that chrome cadillac emblem is gold so once this is good and dry i'll take my gold gel pen doo -doo -doo -doo, that i got on amazon a little years ago and i'll just barely touch that and what i'll do is i'll get the gold flowing and then i'll wipe it with a with a bright, uh, paper towel so there's hardly any on the ball and I'll just very little, you know, just touch these lightly until that gold shows up nice. But these are sharp and they go with the plastic tires. <laughs> it's been a while since I've done plastic tires, but it's no big deal, especially these because, you know, the rim's not built in. So that makes these super simple. What I will do is I'll grab these from the center like this and I'll paint both sides and the center of them once I clean this this mold line off but I gotta tell you that these things went together so nice same with Mr. and Mrs. Eldorado they went together great the seat went together no problem and everything else that I've test fit went together very well so if all I gotta do is a little struggle on that body I'm not a you know, I don't have a problem with that. But let's move on because it was a chrome day. Here's the uh, um, one bumper for the back. This thing doesn't have a big honking bumper that goes all the way across. It's got this and then black. And then while well, back here somewhere is the license plate bracket. But what I did is I pan aligned the exhaust because that's where the exhaust pipe goes through. I gave it a coat of red for the brake light, um, white for the backup light. And I will, once this dries, I'll come back with very, very little amount of panel liner and I'll hit that and it'll go like it did and whiten up. I'll show you on the next, uh, the next update. We'll do it live and in person so I can show you how quick and easy that is. But then I wasn't sure up here, so I gave that a little red dot too. I'm, I thought this whole piece was supposed to be red, but it sure isn't molded to where it'd be right if I painted it. So we're just gonna leave it like that. So that's these and I did both of them. They both came out really, really nice. The red flowed beautifully on the chrome. So there's no problems there. The um, exhaust port I will hit that again because I want that to be pretty dark and what I'm going to also do since this is a daily driver and back in the leaded times this little ring around the outside is going to have a little bit of soot on it um, it's just the way it was back then so I'm going to do that too I love the wings on these things so I'll, I'll put a little bit of soot because it's a daily driver yeah he's taking it to the show but you got to get there I'm still jazzed about that bumper. But now we're about 20 minutes in and I'm about done bothering you. But I told you I wanted to show you the color that I'm going to use. And there it is. And what that is, is that is Tamiya's blue. Here, I'm going to have to move some things around because I like showing everybody the bottle. This is, excuse my reach, Tamiya's X blue or <laughs> X blue, X4 blue, mixed up real good. And Tamiya's X11 chrome silver. And check that out. And I'm telling you right now, when I did the mix on white, that mix is perfect for Pontiac blue. <laughs> 
for a Pontiac engine blue, that's what I will use from now on. And that is one drop of chrome to one drop of blue. It doesn't get any easier than that. And with that, I decided I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do the seats in the black. And I know I just talked about um, how much I like the tan and all that stuff. But with that blue, I think I really should go with the black. Um, here's the steering wheel too. You know, I'll do um, a different blue. I won't do the metallic blue on the steering wheel. What I might use is the sky blue for the steering wheel. But the rest of it, you know, I'll, I'll have the chrome and all that. But the rest of it will be the sky blue. And I think that will look better than if I try to use this metallic blue. But tell me, that isn't sharp. That's a great color. And I'll have to put maybe 20 coats of Future or a Quick Shine over the top of it to really bring out the gloss. But that was just a quick brush, brush paint. I'm not touching it because it might still be wet. I tried using the titanium blue, or titanium, jeepers, Batman. The titanium silver and the blue. And this is what I got. And it's almost black with just a little bit of shine. And I didn't care for it. I wanted this thing to be a little more dramatic. And that really pops to me. And I might use that more than just on this one. This might turn into a, a Chevelle sometime or a Nova maybe with that blue. But right now, that is going to look so stinking sharp on this big daddy so with that remember one to one i will let you go thanks for watching thumbs up and all the good comments and everything i hope you enjoy this build it seems like it's going to go pretty quick but anyhow i'll let you go y'all have a great day and a better tomorrow thanks for watching